November 2019 is a murky month. Now, I'm not against murkiness. Murkiness is fine. You know, it's dreamy, it's loose, it's serendipitous, it's, it's murky. You're not clear with things, and that's okay. Except that we are in the midst of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which is exact in January. It's going to be a big deal. It's going to be a big deal. It's a 37-year cycle, and Saturn and Pluto are not the easiest uh, cosmic characters to get along with. But um, we're already feeling it. You know, don't think, well, it's January that that's going to happen. We're already feeling it. The moon triggers it every month. The, the, the two planets rising and culminating and setting every day triggers it. Mars has been triggering the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. Venus will trigger the Saturn. Everything triggers the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. So we're already feeling it. Already by declination, it's there. Uh, and if you're looking for big events in the world, and Saturn-Pluto has to do with big events in the world, we have impeachment proceedings in the U.S., we have Brexit, we have the, the West Coast burning, the East Coast flooding, we have all of these types of things going on that are, are reminding us that we're already in the midst of it. When you're in the midst of a storm and you're piloting your way through a storm, what would you like? clarity right you want a good steady hand at the tiller type of thing and that's what we have a hard time getting with november of 2019 i'm armand diaz with your forecast for the month and i want to suggest that you go to armanddiaz.com and read the blog and i want to suggest that you subscribe and get the weekly forecasts here on this channel uh, or that you go to uh the website and get the daily uh, the monthly the weekly there's only a couple more choices left, and I got it. The weekly forecast in written form, which I find very helpful because they have things like moon void times, or integral astrology on Facebook, where you can get daily updates and little hints about how to handle the day. I say that because in the month, I want to give you an overview without weighing you down with a lot of details. You could come back and watch it again, but let's face it, this isn't going to be that good in reruns. So you get a little smaller bites over the course of time is probably even more helpful than the monthly forecast. But don't go anywhere. Watch this whole video and then, you know, sign up for that stuff. Okay, why is it a murky month? Well, the day before the month begins on Halloween, October 31st, Mercury stations to go retrograde and he is retrograde until the 20th. So the month begins with an intensely murky period because Mercury stations, to go retrograde or direct, are always murky. And then on the 20th, when he stations to go direct, we also have a couple of days on either side of that that are especially murky, but the entire retrograde is murky. And Mercury is retrograding in Scorpio, and when he retrogrades in water signs, things tend to be rather intense in a couple of different ways. First of all, it uh, tends to be a, a more difficult retrograde in general. It also tends to be a bit more problematic because folks get a little bit more emotional and reactive, and communication gets, you know, with Mercury in a water sign, communication is going to be emotionally tinged, and Scorpio is not the easiest sign for Mercury to be working his way through uh, going forwards, let alone doing the backstroke. So there's this kind of reactivity, you know, I, I want stuff to happen, it's not happening fast enough, what's wrong, what did you mean by that, how could you say such a thing, oh, I've had it with that person, you know, that sort of stuff gets to be a big deal. Um, and even, you know, <laughs> I know for a fact, even straight away tech problems can drive you nuts. Uh, a couple of little experiences myself recently. Uh, so there's this murkiness that comes from Mercury being retrograde. Well, okay, after the 20th, he'd still be in his shadow through the, the beginning part of December, but things should uh, get a little clearer then, right? Mm. Except that Neptune stations to go direct on the 27th of November. And we got to give, oh, I would probably give a week on either side of a Neptune station, but at least three or four days to intense murkiness, intense murkiness. I'm just saying that around Neptune stations, typically 
we hear a lot about uh, illnesses, viruses, things like that, you know, the latest pandemic, you know, the, the awful flu season and all of this sort of stuff kind of grabs the collective consciousness around this time. It's also a time when people just get a little obsessive about things. People get a little bit nuts. There's a sort of, it's a panic kind of aspect. It doesn't need to be a panic kind of aspect, mind you. But it often is, you know, that's sort of the lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator is I'm going to panic about things and we're all going to panic about things. Uh, a better choice for this time around the Neptune station or just November would be to sort of step back, take a breather, you know, serendipity and meditation are great. You know, this is, this is the real recipe over here for handling stuff. You know, you meditate, you get a clear mind, you bring some coherence to yourself that is not present in the cosmos right now. And, you know, that helps. That helps you to be that steady hand at the tiller. Still, Saturn, Pluto, some of the aspects that are going on make it kind of difficult to do so. For example, right around Neptune Station, uh, we have Mars is going to oppose Uranus. That's on the 24th. That's a very charged kind of energy. Actually, with Mercury just having gone retrograde on November 5th, Mars squares Pluto. You know, we're, we're talking about some tense kinds of energy here. Mars-Pluto at the beginning of November, focus yourself towards a goal and, you know, cross your fingers and hope for the best. Mercury's retrograde, so progress may not be outstanding, but that's the strategy. Focus yourself towards a goal. No, multitask no multitasking in November. If you're going to do anything, do one thing at a time. You don't have to just one thing all month long. But uh, one thing at a time. That's the way we're going to handle November. We just do one thing at a time. That's the whole strategy for the month. No multitasking. As much focus as you can bring. Saturn Pluto can bring you focus. Right around the 5th, right around the 25th, and for various times during the month, there is the possibility of a kind of reactivity that sort of explodes a bit. I think that the, uh, the Mars Pluto at the beginning of the month is a little easier to handle believe it or not, because of the signs involved. When uh, Mars opposes Uranus, he'll be in his home sign of Scorpio, which is good, it's powerful. And there's a, there's a tendency to be very defensive and very sort of aggressively defensive. You know, the best defense is a good offense kind of thing. And so there could be some real explosiveness around this time. But hey, November 24th, you know what else happens? is that Venus meets with Jupiter and in Jupiter's home sign of Sagittarius. Now, Venus and Jupiter get along really well, and in his own home sign, they get along really, really well. And this is a, a great opportunity. You know, if you, if you can avoid Mars and Uranus or use it constructively or... Hmm. Um, this is really a nice opportunity. So right around the 24th, 25th, the, uh, the meeting of Venus and Jupiter, usually all things being equal, if Neptune wasn't stationing, if Mars wasn't opposing Uranus, what I would say is the greatest danger is overindulgence. But, um, I mean, that's the greatest Venus-Jupiter concern, but, uh, there are other things on the plate at that time. It should be, you know, Make, should make for some nice times around then. Uh, also, right around November 14th, when Venus squares Neptune, we have a similar kind of uh, energy. It's not quite as uh, upbeat and positive. Uh, in fact, some folks could get a little bit uh, blue about things. It, it, it will exaggerate relationship matters. It could also exaggerate concerns about finances. Uh, but if it doesn't exaggerate, the more positive side of Venus-Neptune is that it puts things in soft focus. You know, Venus and Sagittarius will give you kind of a, ah, oh, this could work out type of thing. And Neptune says, yeah, sure, whatever. And it's right, uh, right after the full moon on November 12th, which is a time that people will be more upbeat and outgoing. So, you know, we do have some good fun times right around the 12th to the 14th right around the 25th 
if that Mars Uranus thing. Well, you know, the cosmos gives us mixed messages. That's always the case. It's a mixed bag kind of situation. So beginning part of the month, lots and lots of focus. After the fifth and up to the full moon, we have more or less constructive energy, you know, Again, take things slow, expect setbacks, don't think that things are gonna flow all that easily. At the full moon, we have perhaps a moment of clarity. Uh, we see things because this full moon is gonna be trying to Saturn and Pluto. So we see things kind of clearly for just a quick second. It's the full moon though, so we might kind of overreact to what we see. But there's a sense of, oh, wow, this is what's going on. And then the fog rolls back in, and it really stays rolled in till the end of the month. Uh, and we're going to be dealing with uncertainty. And that's your strategy. Well, that's not your strategy. That's your task for the month. Your task for the month is to figure out how to deal with uncertainty, how to deal with not being sure what's happening, even though you're very, very sure that lots is happening. Or lots is happening. A lot is happening. There's uh, there's an anxiety that comes when you know things are going on, and you're not quite sure what they are. It's just a recipe for paranoia, actually. Um, you don't want to become paranoid. <laughs> that's that's not a good thing. And so, as I said, your strategy: you want to focus on things one at a time. Have some patience. Do some meditation, get the internal coherence that the cosmos is not providing. And subscribe to the weekly forecast because then you'll you know, have a better sense of what's going on in smaller bites. I'll see you soon.